the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for February 26, 2008. Um, we have several things on the agenda today, but first, why don't we just note appearances, starting on my far right with Dr. Chapness. Jay, <coughs> Jay Chapness, and I'd like to apologize for being late. I got caught in out of town in the weather. So. We, we figured the weather was slowing you down, so we waited a few minutes. Uh, Jim Walsh. Peter Black. Peter Howe. Lynn Galino, Chair. Dave Johnson. Malcolm Weatherby. Thank you. Um, first issue on the agenda for this evening is the election of officers, um, which we do annually. We were supposed to do in December, but um, we didn't have much business in December. So this is the first time we've met in a while. So that's the first issue on the election of officers. I have not dealt with that. Do you usually open it up just for discussion, I take it, Bruce? Yeah, any discussion about the subject? Is the floor open for nomination? Yes. I'd like to nominate Lynn Galino to continue to be chairman. Second. I would be happy to serve. It's been fun serving for the last year or so over the few handful of meetings we've had. And I'm starting to get the feel for it, notwithstanding the long hiatuses between meetings. So all in favor? And do we have a vice chair now, Bruce? Uh, secretary. Secretary? Okay. And who's the secretary at this point? Well, be, that's the vice chair. You got to nominate somebody. Who is now? Yeah. Um, is it Peter? What's that? Or is that Jay? It's Jay, isn't it? Who is the vice chair? You know, I don't know. <laughs> That's how important that position is. <laughs> I guess, who wants it? I guess. <laughs> who? Jay acted as secretary. Yeah, I guess Jay. Okay. So. I'd like to nominate Jay Chapman again oh. for the position of secretary. Second. Or draft him, however you see yeah. it. Second. Are you in favor of this, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds rather redundant. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor. Aye. All right. Who second? Um, I did. Peter did. Peter. <clears throat> Not much of a secretary, so that they will. <clears throat> right. Are we'll you going to take the minutes for this evening? Well, I'm going to try. <laughs> We're counting on you, big time. Don't ask me to repeat anything you say, though, because I made a problem. No. <laughs> you just make it up after. Right. It's okay. After you see how we grill the last person who took the minutes from a July last year, I'm sure. You're going to have second thoughts about this role. That's probably true. Yeah. We're looking for one. All right. The next order of business, that's it. We don't need any other officers as far as I understand. Is that correct, Bruce? That's correct. Okay. So the next order of business is approve the minutes of July 24, 2007, believe it or not. That was our last minutes of a meeting. Um, I have some comments. The first one is, it says I was there. Was I there? I can't remember that far back. <laughs> um, any comments on the minutes from July? Move accepted. Second. Second, all in favor? Minutes are approved. Okay, I don't believe we have any old business to go over. So we'll move on to new business. And for tonight we have two, um, two appeals, um, or two matters before us, two new matters. The first is to hear the request, and we thank you for bringing some business to us. We've been, if we seem a little rusty, it's because we haven't had much opportunity to get at bats here. Uh, the first one is to hear the request of Janesta, is that how you pronounce it? Yes. Janesta, Lynn Barry, 3 Seal Cove Road for a right side property line variance of 13 feet from the required 25 feet to construct a one story addition at 12 feet from said property line. Uh, Ms. Barry, would, or who is going to present the application? If you would take the podium and you. identify yourself, please. Yes, thank you. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, my name is Jim Fisher. I work with Northeast Civil Solutions. We are surveyors and engineers. And uh, I've been asked by Ms. Barry this evening to be able to, uh, to come here and uh, present the packet that she has prepared that you see before you this evening uh, regarding her request to 
or proposal to construct a, uh, a relatively small addition off of the back of her house for the purposes of a, it's a one-story addition, uh, for a kitchen and uh, to extend the area to a dining area. Uh, what I'd like to do is, and Ms. Berry obviously is here this evening too, and she can answer any specific questions about the property. <coughs> what I'd like to do is take you through just a, a bit of the history uh, of this particular site and then uh, open up to any questions or address any comments that you may have and go from there. Ms. Berry owns the property that is uh, in the area, well, Seal Cove Lane is a private lane that is in the area of in by the sea. It's right across the street, basically. Uh, it kind of pinpoints the overall area for those of us who are uh, familiar with Cape. Uh, what she has is a property that was created about 40 years ago. Uh, you can see in your packets the property is relatively uniquely configured. Uh, we in Cape have uh, quite a number of uh, uniquely configured properties, but this one with the panhandle that extends back to the Great Pond area is indeed uh, one of the more unusual. Uh, and it is even more a little unusual, uh, given the size and shape of the property, to be able to have a house there by today's standards. But the house, too, is uh, well over 40 years old, and uh, it's a relatively modest home. Uh, you, you've got in your packet, uh, just behind the plan that we created in conjunction with the survey, uh, some of the information uh, regarding the square foot comparables for the uh, other houses that are in the particular area. What tab are you referring to? Um, this is, uh, I don't have the actual tabs on my sheet, but it's just behind the, um, the actual survey, our survey of the property. Uh, and then right behind that, um, you've got the actual uh, approximate uh, radius the, uh, from the structures, respective structures in that particular area to their respective property lines. These are the primary area, uh, um, documents that I'll be referring to here in just a few moments. Uh, what I would like to tell you is that... Um, our Hold on one second. I just want to make sure. Doesn't that normally have a mic over there? Is, are we picking this? Are you able to pick up his voice? You are? Okay. <coughs> Go ahead and proceed. I can boom it out a little bit better if I have to, but it sounds like we're all set here. Yeah. Thank you. Um, what I'd like to point out is the, uh, the configuration of the property itself. Uh, we actually did go out there about the uh, well, latter part of this past year, and we conducted a survey, which is one of the things that my company does. We did find some uh, survey monumentation, not only on the Locust property, but in the particular area as well. Uh, the plan that you see before you, which is the existing conditions plan, shows the structures that are actually on the property shows Seal Cove Lane. If you were to continue down Seal Cove Lane, you'd come out to Route 77, again, almost across the street from in by the sea. There is a property uh, immediately in front of this with a home on it, and then, generally speaking, there are homes surrounding it. Uh, again, for those of us who are aware generally of that area, the properties in that section of town uh, tend to be a little bit larger than, for instance, those that are over by the park or uh, in the RC zone, for instance. Uh, this is one of the smaller ones there. And the home itself is uh, relatively small as well. And there, I would like to refer you to the, uh, the tab, I think it's tab five, that is um, the comparables, again, of the square footage of the homes that are in the immediate area. You can see that even with the requested, or the variance that we're requesting, relative to the square footage that she's proposing for this one-story addition, her home would still be the smallest of those that are in that particular area. So in terms of keeping the character of the neighborhood, uh, I think we're very well doing that. Again, if any of you have a chance to be able to drive by, obviously it'd be after tonight's meeting, um, you can see that uh, this home is well off the road by about uh, 200, almost 300 feet. And there's a, a beautiful row of pine trees, rather uh, older growth pine trees that's along the right side, which actually goes right down the road and uh, up on the right-hand side of the paved driveway and then the right-hand side of the house. So again, from the uh, neighborhood perspective, this house, as many of the houses out in that area, are pretty well isolated onto themselves. You can't really see this one from the road, uh, most of the abutters that are around the area, even in the winter conditions that we have right now, can't really see this house. So again, from character of the neighborhood, I think we're, uh, uh, we meet that uh, characteristic rather well. Um, I'd like to point out to the, uh, the radii, I believe it's tab six, that deals with the radii of the uh, other properties that are in this immediate area. This is a Google Earth photograph, and uh, the radii that we have there is to scale relative to the scale of this particular photograph. This is something that we did as well. I believe that, it's tab four in your, this, this particular one? Yes. Yeah, right. tab four. Thank you. Uh, and that particular uh, photograph shows the spatial relationship of all the other structures, the principal houses, relative to their respective property lines. 
please keep in mind too that as far as the property lines is concerned, what we did was uh, in conjunction with the survey that we did perform, the existing conditions plan, uh, we went out and we found uh, the specific monumentation in the immediate area of Ms. Berry's property, and then we found several other bits of uh, monumentation, usually iron pipes, cap rebar, what have you, uh, that are around the area, but not, we obviously didn't conduct a full survey of this entire section because that gets a little uh, uh, expensive relative to the uh, extensiveness of that particular survey. So what we did was we took uh, the information that we were able to find mathematically correct, meaning the survey information that's actually out there, the iron pipes and the cap rebar, uh, and we were able to tie that into uh, the respective deeds for these properties relative to the assessment map, overlay that, rotate all that information into the mathematical information that we were able to garner out there, and then we came up with this map relative to the overlay of the um, uh, respective property boundaries that you see before you. That's the basic history of how we got what we got. <clears throat> what Ms. Berry is looking for, and it's a little difficult on this photograph to be able to see, but um, you can see there's a, a straight radii line uh, ranging from the words Beach Rose Lane straight over to the middle point of her house. Uh, at that end point, right in the middle of the circle, is like in the midpoint of her, the current structure. What she's looking to do is uh, extend off the back right of that structure. Or again, when I refer you to our particular plan, the existing conditions plan, uh, it would be off the, uh, the back right-hand side uh, as the driveway comes up to the actual house itself. Uh, relatively small addition, again, uh, for the purpose of a kitchen. Uh, it's not making it extensive. There's no second story proposed to it. It's not coming any closer to the existing uh, easterly sideline or the right-hand sideline that you see than the house is right now. So we're not asking for any variance to come closer than anything already exists. Uh, simply what we'd like to do is just extend that because her kitchen right now is in that corner and uh, with all the plumbing and the utilities and what have you to go to it and she would literally like to just extend that out which will then leave a dining area essentially where the kitchen is right now and extend this toward the back of the property. The only variance that we're looking for is from that easterly sideline. There's plenty of room in the back uh, to fit within the existing building envelope and essentially that's uh, all we're requesting before the board this evening. Toward this end, uh, if you've got any specific questions about the structure, Mr. Brandon, otherwise I'd be happy to answer any questions myself or just any comments that you have. I just had, Mr. Fisher, a quick question. I take it where you've drawn in here is where the thing's going to go off yes. the back of the property there? Yes. And then as far as the aerial map, I take it um, what we're looking at here, it's a little hard to tell, but I assume this is just all vegetation along the right-hand boundary of the That's property. correct. That's the old growth tree. And this is the closest property over here? Um, the closest property is probably the one that's right in front. Uh, the one that's where you see the word Seal Cove Lane. There's a house right opposite the word Cove. The closest property to where the, or the, that, that's the only property that might have a view of that addition? Uh, actually, that property wouldn't even see the addition because the addition is going to be completely off of the, uh, the back of the house. Um, I would venture a guess and say that, and I don't know this absolutely, but I think the only house, the only structure there that might actually see the addition would be the house that is uh, to the immediate right, that light-roofed house on this drawing, to the immediate right of Seal Cove Lane. Um, and that's actually looking through the trees, and you can see the, the spottedness of the trees back there, and then there's that barrier almost of uh, high old-growth pine trees that goes right down the right side of Seal Cove Lane. So I think even that might be a stretch, even in the wintertime, to be able to see that. Other than that, no one would actually see from their house uh, the proposed addition. Other comments, questions? So, I'm sorry. Um, so these distances on the table, on the Google Earth map, were um, calculated by electronically? It wasn't, these aren't physical measurements? Uh, a little bit of both. Where we found some of the area, please keep in mind that we did a lot of this survey work when there was already a couple of feet of snow on the ground, uh, which makes it a little bit more of a challenge. I mean, we can do anything at any point, but it gets a little bit more expensive that way. And toward this end, in order to keep expenses down, what we did was, uh, long answer to your question, we actually found, we went to the, to the Locust property, uh, Ms. Berry's property, uh, and we basically surveyed that as an existing condition. In other words, we're not creating a mathematical boundary survey, but we took the information that was there relative to its deed, found the monumentation from what had been already surveyed on that property, and put that, so the creation of her property is as you see it on this existing conditions plan. 
In addition to that, when we were out there, we also <coughs> looked for, relative to the deed descriptions of the immediate properties around the immediate area, and uh, whenever anything called for an iron or a survey monument, whatever that might be, we also looked for that in the immediate vicinity. When we found enough, which is a sub somewhat subjective term, but we found about a half a dozen different irons, and we were then able to create those in this property relative to this photograph, and themselves relative to the respective deeds for each one of these properties, and drop that into essentially this configuration so that we were able to determine where the boundaries are of many of these properties, but not all of them. From that mathematical <coughs> interpretation then of those deeds, we were able to then take the tax map, uh, which is essentially correct, but always has, you know, there's a little bit of play there, as it were, and we were able to rotate those um, configurations of each one of these respective properties from the tax map into the mathematical data that we actually did find on the face of the earth. The long answer to your question is, no, we didn't do a survey of everything that you see out here, uh, but we did it enough to be able to make sure that the configurations that you see before you superimposed on this photograph are indeed correct. And then where it says distance, um, you know, the table has lot, a column for lot, and a column for distance. Mm -hmm. The distance column, is that a, a side yes. distance? Yep. What we were looking at are the comparables from what she has and proposes relative to what other houses are out there. And uh, we played with that a little while. Because of this particular area of town, um, you, can make it, you can make this radii smaller or bigger and what have you. We actually worked with Bruce extensively on this, or relatively extensively on this one, um, to be able to show the immediate neighborhood without, getting, without extrapolating out too far uh, to meet the requirement to be able to show uh, at a minimum of uh, 10 properties or 10 structures on those properties uh, what we actually had relationship-wise to our locus at the center. Thanks. You're welcome. So in, <clears throat> in that distance column, you did not include any front or rear? Correct. We did not. Uh, re regarding your application, page one of your application, midway down, set up the property line. Uh, on the line, the road that says front, side, and rear, the current you have on the side 25. Now, earlier, did you not state that the si right-hand side, easterly side, was currently 12? Yeah, these are the uh, these figures that you see in the application are what the uh, statute refers to today. Um, that's what this district actually has for it. If you were building, a, or if somebody were building a new house on a new property, well, that's the we know that there. because that's stated in the ordinance. But does this not, uh, Mr. It should have been, should have been 12. It should have been 12. Uh, I'd far. For our records, for future reference, what I'm pointing out, that road that says current, that's, that's <clears throat> existing on the property today, dwelling from side setback. Correct. Yeah, that should. So it should be 12. It should be 12. Uh, this, is, this is an academic statement. We want this to show up in case someone refers back to it in the future. Absolutely. So we would like to correct that current <laughs> right or easterly sideline, we would like to, ch if it's correct, if you're stating it's correct, we'd like to change that first 25 to 12, if that is the existing setback for the right or easterly side. Is that appropriate? That is appropriate. That is correct. And then the second <coughs> row underneath it proposed is not encroaching any further on the sideline, so it will remain at 12. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. So if I understand your data, it's that you have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 <coughs> subjects, and half of those are more nonconforming than your proposed request. Yes. More of the same. More of the same, right, the similar, or more so. All right. Any other questions, comments? Okay. Um, unless you have something else to add, we'll open it up for other folks to the audience to have comments, if there's anyone here that wants to speak in opposition. Unless you have anything else to add, Mr. Fisher? I'm all set. Thank you. Okay, great.
Why don't you have a seat? Anyone else here to speak on either for or against the Berry application? Does anyone have any further questions of the applicant, or should we close it and open it to discussion among ourselves? All set? Okay, I'm going to close the public presentation portion of this and open it up to debate among the members. Anybody have any comments about this application? I'll just make a comment of, of obvious facts and that of that both from a standpoint of the sideline setback as, where, as well as the square footage comparable, it appears that the application does meet in both instances. Yeah. I would agree with that. Anybody have any problems with no. that assessment? No. Um, applications nicely put together and um, applicants seems to understand the uh, zoning requirements to obtain a variance. Um, the numbers seem to work for you, and <coughs> also the aesthetics seem to work in the sense that you're not going to be impacting anybody's, anybody's um, view. Um, so you have uh, um, a very strong application. Um, so with that said, what I would like to do is um, to take some votes on the eight requirements that we need to find in order to uh, approve this application. Um, first question is, does the proposed variant that the proposed variance is not a substantial departure from the intent of the ordinance. All in favor of that finding? Unanimous. Uh, a literal enforcement of the ordinance would, ca would cause a practical difficulty. All in favor of that finding? The need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. All in favor of that finding? The granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not unreasonably detrimentally affect the use or market value of abutting properties. All in favor? Unanimous. The practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. All in favor? No other feasible alternative to a variance is available to the petitioner. All in favor of that finding? Unanimous. The granting of a variance will not unreasonably adversely affect the natural environment. All in favor? Unanimous. The property is not located in whole or part within a shoreland area as described in Title 38, Section 435. All in favor of that finding? Unanimous. Um, could I have a motion, please? Move to approve the variance appeal. Okay. And if, um, just for the record, it's a motion to approve the appeal of Janesta Lynn Berry for a variance from the strict application of the zoning ordinance required by Section 1961. Uh, the appellant requests a right side property line variance of 13 feet from the required 25 feet to construct a one story addition at 12 feet from the said property line. Uh, can I have a second to that second. motion? All in favor? Applications approved unanimously. Congratulations. Well, now that we've dusted off some of the rest, we're ready for our second application. Um, this is to hear the request of Josh and Aaron Hurley of 3 Ironclad Road uh, for, for a front setback variance of 9 feet from the required 25 feet to construct a second floor deck and a second floor addition at 16 feet from said property line and a left side property line variance of 19 feet for a second floor deck at six feet from said property line. Um, could you please identify yourself? Please? Sure, Josh Hurley. Josh, uh, would you like to present your application, please? Sure. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board. Uh, we have a modest uh, request here for a small addition. Uh, my wife and I are proposing for our house. Um, essentially, it's a uh, the second floor um, expansion of 132 square feet and a deck off the other bedroom. Uh, that's uh, 80 square feet. Uh, all of the addition will be within the existing footprint. Uh, no other addition or no other sight lines will be affected uh, for our neighbors. Um, and as you can see from the application, we meet uh, the criteria of the variance. Mr. 
Mr. Rose, um, I'm looking at the last plot plan, which is this page. Correct. Um, you just described, I'm looking at this. Describe what we're looking at here, please. Sure. Uh, the existing house uh, footprint there is what the uh, outside gray line is. Part of it is uh, uh, dotted there and part of it's solid. The addition that we're proposing, or the expansion, is in that grade off area there where it says proposed first floor. The first floor is actually covered under the uh, normal ordinances. That's the space above that on the second floor that we need the variance for. From the, and it looks like the front of the house where the stairs are, it, that's actually a side. The front actually goes along the top here. That's Ironclad Road. So the front setback that we need for 16 feet is this space right here that's illustrated as 16 feet to the dotted uh, thick line. The other deck area there is on the uh, back of the house there, and that's illustrated by the thick um, uh, dotted line. Again, uh, 16 feet back, both are going to be 16 feet back from the uh, front of the house, and then the other setback that we're talking about is 6 feet back from the side, which is what appears to be the rear of the house on there. Just a point of clarification, the reason why I didn't need variance for the first floor, there was already a, uh, a cement cover. A deck, all deck of the garage cement. that was already, yep. already designated the first floor. That he's, he's able to close that in without the variance. He didn't need a variance for the second, second floor. That, the that increases the square footage. So technically, they could have continued that out right out to the entire front porch. We could have exactly. If they yeah. wanted. Yep. 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 Yeah. If you look at the uh, uh, first illustration there, it's, it's a third page in. Um, it's basically what we're talking about here is this right up here is what we need the variance for this yeah. little bump out. Uh, this first um, bump out on the first floor here is over an existing foundation, the deck. This deck over here would remain open space um, and unenclosed essentially. In order to accomplish the, um, the deck on the second floor, are you raising roof lines at all? Uh, the roof line overall will be raised on, actually the overall roof line would be raised as part of the addition. It wouldn't be part of the variance, but it would be part of the um, addition. The part that would be specific to the variance wouldn't be raised, meaning that the, uh, it's got a really low ceiling already. Right. in the house, so we're going to essentially uh, raise up the rafters as part of the construction process. The deck itself um, is an open deck, so it wouldn't have a roof over it, so it wouldn't be um, part of the variance. Yeah, so no increase in floor area because of this. Exactly. Right. right. Okay. Mr. Hulley, I'm probably not reading this correctly, probably because I didn't study it in depth enough, but it would probably help me if you walk us through each one of these oh, sure. plans and show us what's existing and what's, what's proposed. Sure. Um, basically on this, uh, what's called right elevation here. Yep. Uh, we have the, uh, uh, the existing house. If you um, picture uh, this left-hand side of it extending all the way over to the right, that's essentially what you have is a mirror copy. And basically what we're looking at is uh, uh, taking what's uh, a porch area uh, that's not enclosed and enclosing that on the right-hand side of it sure. and going up. The reason why we're not going straight up over here is that the 20-foot um, uh, rear setback um, comes into place and we have to indent essentially on the second floor to go up. Um, so that, that's the reason why you have the slight indentation from that and side. And you, you didn't have the comparables. To exactly. Yeah, working with Bruce, we figured out we didn't have the comparables on that. So you're enclosing the front porch, basically, and then putting a, a dormer area over the top. Exactly. Or half the front porch, that is. Sure. If we go to the next page here, the front, what's labeled front elevation, this is uh, the perspective is standing on Ironclad Road. <laughs> uh, you can see the, uh, the steps would lead up here. Uh, the enclosed area, basically where my pen is, over to the right, is basically the um, expansion. And again, the, what we're talking about for the variance is this uh, area here from the second floor. <clears throat> what may be confusing, and maybe not, is that the front of the, what appears to be the front of the house is really is not. the right side. Yeah. 
Exactly. Just like the neighborhood is hard to we, we identified, I think, one that had two front setbacks, one of the properties nearby. <laughs> two fronts. Yeah. So, a little unusual. Yeah. On the next page, uh, what's called left elevation, from everyone else's perspective, the, really the rear of the house, this illustrates the deck there mm -hmm. with the left. All within the existing footprint. Exactly, all within the existing footback, set in a little um, uh, to meet the uh, uh, requirements. Looks like a reverse dome. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's cut. Yeah, exactly. Cut out of the roof. Exactly. So it's actually on the on, so third floor. Yeah, here. exactly. Exactly. And then finally, we have uh, what's called rear elevation, uh, the other side of the house here. It really isn't anything that we're doing that just shows you the uh, uh, the pump out there that uh, we're talking about the second floor. And again, the, where I put my pen there, anything to the left of that is new. <clears throat> Going to go over the floor plans as well. We're probably not as interested. Uh, you're not uh, you're not going to have access to your basement through there. Your uh, no, it, it, there's a weird um, yeah, it is. <laughs> way. That it, 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 you guys, I'm sure, sure have seen these weird things. There's a in the hatch. Uh, there's a hatch in the kitchen that you go down, and it's awkward. And my wife could get through there easily, but uh, you know, my size is no way. So you know, <laughs> except for going down outside and in, that's the only way to get in. Correct. Yeah, because that's the end of that Pullman kitchen, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. It's, it's awkward. <laughs> And basically, that first floor plan, um, we didn't uh, spend uh, uh, the money with Anestos and NATO there to um, illustrate, obviously, the whole um, concept inside here for interior walls. Everyone, mm -hmm. make sure we get your approval. Um, but basically, we have that new kitchen area on the first floor, which isn't part of the area, but you can really see what, what's being enclosed. With that floor plan there, you can see the extra space there for that bedroom, um, the 132 square feet. That is part of the variance request. So on your second floor floor plan, the deck is going to be above the bathroom and the bedroom? Exactly. And you'll get into it via the bedroom? Exactly. Yep. Or uh, probably where it says closet right now in the middle is probably where the stairs should be. We're working. Uh, again, I didn't want to get into drill into it and pay the bumps <laughs> <laughs> until we got the uh, approval from you guys first. Would you mind taking us through the um, calculations of the set, uh, sure. setbacks, the front and the side? Sure. Uh, do you want to start with the map first, the larger map? This one here, it says uh, Hurley on the side. Uh, it's a Google map there. Yep. And what Anessos and NATO did is essentially took the tax map, uh, overlaid it on a Google map, and then illustrated, um, boxed out, roughly boxed out where each of the houses were, and then using um, basically uh, the uh, utility within Google Map, uh, figured out um, this uh, basically the setbacks that we have. If you look at the uh, grid here, what you have is the, the lot number, uh, the uh, front setback, which is the second column, the third column is the side setback, and then uh, over to the right and below those last few rows talk about uh, the number of uh, properties um, and how many exceed um, the, the variance already are non-conforming to the variance. So out of the, uh, what's it, uh, the first one is total front setbacks, less than 25 foot, uh, six out of 10 uh, meet that. Uh, so what we're asking for, six out of 10 already meet it. So I guess, it, what's it, a 50% rule that you have, five out of 10. I know you don't need the average. I think that's for the other part of the orange, but we just threw it in there. 12.7. After we printed this off to save paper, I realized I didn't have that right, so that's why you see the little tape in there. Rewrote that 12.7 is the average in case you're interested. And then on the side setback, again, 6 out of 10 of those lots, uh, average of 5.4 on the uh, side setback. And the, what you're looking for is what's the variance you're looking for for the front and the side? Uh, the front is going to be 16, uh, the side will be 6.
and as I understand it, if you've not put a, like for the second lot, you haven't put a setback for the front end because that is a conforming property. It's more than 25 feet or more. Exactly. So basically on the uh, setback to the front, you have uh, one, two, three, pro four properties that are more non-conforming than your proposed variance. Correct. Out of ten. And then on the other one you have five, is it? One, two, three, four, five properties that are more non-conforming. Out of the sample he has there? Well, doesn't that six. That's six. That's uh, six. Six is What's that? Yeah, there's only I don't see four, 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 six. Sorry, no, on the side. On the side, there's five. There's five that are more non-conforming than his request. He's looking to go to six feet, and you got one. The first, you got number two at one foot, number three at 5.9 feet, number five at one foot, 43 at five feet, 46A at five feet. So you've got five that are more non-conforming and his request on the side setback, but on the front setback, you've only got four. But it, aren't all the ones that are blank already? Those are, those, the ones that are blank are more, yeah. Oh, that's a good point. So it's five out of 10 instead of six out of 10. Right. We had actually eliminated um, a few. I think that we had done too large of a radius, and I think we, so it actually should be well, five. Five out of 10, you're okay, as I understand the rule, but four out of 10 doesn't cut it, as I understand the rule. One, two, three. Right. <coughs> What's that? That's five. Two, three, four, five. So the five. side setback, we got five out of ten. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I'm sorry. Two, yeah, David five. Johnson points out to me that number three is 16 <coughs> is, yeah. is non-conforming yeah. measures. Okay, so that will follow. So, well. so I apologize. It should actually say five out of ten on both. Yeah, so it's five out of ten. <coughs> Good catch. Take him out for a drink. All right. <laughs> And the, the, I'm sorry, the areas that you left blank, you left blank for what reason? Uh, those were exceeding the um, uh, setback, so they were uh, conforming. <coughs> exceeding the ordinance. ordinance setback, so you didn't yeah. bother to. Exactly. Good. Other questions? <clears throat> Do you have any other additions to your application that you want to note? Uh, let's see. The only other addition that I did put in was the uh, square footage addition, which is after the second um, floor, floor plan. It's uh, at the top labeled square footage details. As you can tell, this house is relatively small compared to the other houses in the neighborhood. Eight out of the ten of the closest houses um, are larger in square footage than this house. And that also breaks down on um, the next block of information, just the extent of the renovation, which is minor. Yeah. Basically, we're uh, talking about 132 square foot, second floor, and 80 for the deck, with a total, uh, including the uh, first floor addition of 1,800 square feet. Great. So the total, uh, the total with the proposal is 8 out of 10, plus a larger. That's still it. larger, exactly, yeah. Any further questions for this applicant? No. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Hurley, did you want to add anything? I think you did <laughs> Ma'am, did you want to either say anything for or against this application? Thank you. Okay. Um, any discussion? Um, it appears that this applica applicant <coughs> has met the mathematical requirements for the variance, and it also Seems like it's a relatively insignificant impact on the community. And so you closed the public hearing? What's that? Closed the public hearing? Yes, thank you very much. That's for that well, see, he's good at taking notes. I like Ooh, that. You did do it You're right. permanently hired, Bruce. Yeah, thank you. Um, I've so much all my life. I have a question for Bruce. Sure. Should the, should the appeal, uh, the last line, be changed to a third floor deck? Yeah. Yeah. 
I guess it's not really critical in the advertisement, but it's <laughs> you're right. It's a third floor deck. Yeah. <coughs> Any further discussion on this application? Okay. What I'd like to do is take uh, votes on the post on the findings we have to make. And the first one is the proposed variance is not a substantial departure from the intent of the ordinance. All in favor? Unanimous. A literal enforcement of the ordinance would not cause a practical difficulty. All in favor? The need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. All in favor? The granting of the variance will not produce an undes undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not unreasonably detrimentally affect the use or market value of abutting properties. All in favor? The practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior order. O owner. All in favor? No other feasible alternative to a variance is available to the petitioner. All in favor? The granting of a variance will not unreasonably adversely affect the natural environment. All in favor? These are all unanimous, by the way, Bruce. The property is not located in whole or in part within shoreland or areas as described in Title 38, Section 435. All in favor? So that's unanimous. Could I have a motion, please? I move to approve the request of Josh and Aaron Hurley, uh, the Ironclad Road Tax Map U08, Plot 1A, for a front setback variance of nine feet from the required 25 feet to construct a second, uh, third floor deck and a second floor addition at 16 feet from the said property line and a left side property line variance of 19 feet for a third floor deck at six feet from the said property line. Seconded. All in favor? Passes unanimously. I want to compliment you guys on what you've done because I listed that house for a full year trying to get somebody to see the vision that you have. <laughs> That's great. Who's this job? Finally hired an architect to show everybody what it could be. Is, is great house. Less non uh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Less non even though you're just cutting away part of your roof in a fighting group if it's crazy footage. Hey, Len. Hey, Len. You have to work with it. You start to understand the... Len. Len, we're still on the air, you know. Oh, sorry. Told you we are rusty. Take care. Thank you. For all the viewing public out there, we have to maintain decorum here. Any other communications that we need to consider? Yeah, the uh, town clerk has, has informed me that the town council um, has trumped us on the uh, meeting for May 26th, uh, I mean 27th. Uh, it's a final budget meeting in May, the town council chambers. So uh, I'd like to have you vote on the Monday, the 26th, would be a convenient night, if, if you're all in favor of that. So rather, okay, and have that meeting on Monday for that, just that month you're talking about? Yeah. Because they need this room. What's that? They need this room on the next night. Okay. For which month? That's May. for May. May. If we, if we have a meeting. I'm going to say, consider yeah. that yeah. track record. <laughs> That's we right. We don't have a lot to worry about. But it has to be formally um, voted on. Well, either voted on, or you can you can chop your mallet, magic mallet, and say it will be. But does anyone have a major problem with doing it on Monday, the twenty sixth? May twenty sixth. May twenty sixth. That That's Memorial Day, isn't it? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> that could be a problem. I have a problem. Yeah, I have a problem with that too. I'll call in from my camp. Um, then it have to be Wednesday. Wednesday the twenty eighth. That would probably be better. Yeah. Although we might have some people out of town because of the holiday, but yeah. long week. We'll make it. Probably enough, enough of this would be around to get a quorum, I bet. Yeah. Get us some business, Bruce. What's that? Can't get Find us some business. <laughs> You're not being tough enough on these people or something. <laughs> I'm 
being or maybe too tough. That's why they uh, none of them very few go, are going to. They're staying away. We need some controversy. All right. Um, so everybody's comfortable with the 28th. 28th so we'll do it on the 28th. Uh, could I have a motion to anything else to come before the board tonight? No. Could I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. We're adjourned. Who is the first and second? Yeah. Sorry. Who who first, who who made it? First. Jim was second Jim. or somebody. <laughs> somebody. Huh? He's very persnickety.